So we're getting rid of Windows and installing this on the hard disk. So we're going to boot Ubuntu. Oh, that didn't work. Let's try this. Yes. It's in microscopic writing. Okay, this is in tiny mode. These laptops have very high definition screens and uh, how to upscale or downscale is still being decided by Linux. We're going to run install Linux Mint English. Um, now we don't have it plugged into a power source and we don't have it connected to the internet because we have to install a newer kernel for it to recognize the network driver, but that's fine. Are you having fun? Yes. Okay, so we want to do encrypt, um, yep, yeah, that one, and no, install. Uh, okay, I think we'll cut for this. We're back. Ooh. Oh, it's making an encrypted volume. Um, if you continue, the changes listed below will be written to the disks. Yes, yeah, so it's writing to SDA as an EFI boot, and uh, uh, that's fine. And we are in... Not New York. Mm, no, a bit lower. Yes, that's, that's the one. So we're not just mountain time. Arizona doesn't do daylight savings time. So we're not doing home directory encryption because the whole volume's encrypted. And this is not the version of Linux Mint that's infected, we checked. So we happened to put it on a stick two days before and we got it off BitTorrent, so it wasn't even the copy that eventually would become infected anyway. Hmm. And, and for the record, there are good uses of BitTorrent. I know a lot of people that aren't very techy, which I'm not very techy, but I, I think a lot of people think of it as a way of getting free music, whereas it's also a way of getting free software that's fully legal to get free. Hmm. So BitTorrent is a good way to get Linux. That took hmm. just under three minutes to replace the whole operating system. Um, so yeah, restart. Yes. yes. So remove the... If you remove the drive, and uh, press, I think it says press enter. Oh, yes, it does. In very tiny writing. Ah, bye. Okay. So that installed reasonably well. So now the first thing we do is take it out of tiny mode. So if we, they've co-opted the Windows key to bring up the menu and type general. It's actually so small that it's really hard to see. And then switch that to auto. Yeah. That's there. better, now yes. I can read it. And the menus will be all right when you reboot. Ding dong. <laughs> Yes, they, they are now a reasonable size. So we've had to switch to the iPhone because the Samsung Galaxy S6 is hot enough that you could burn yourself on it. Which is worrying since it's only February in Phoenix. Yeah. Anyway, we need to install the newest kernel. Um, so to do that, uh, we actually have it on this USB stick as it happens. So if you plug that in. And then navigate to, I think it was in home, it's the latest one, so which kernel version? Uh, the one that says RC5. And this uses GDebbie. Because at the moment nothing really works, like the mouse pad doesn't work, and the touch screen doesn't work, but with the new kernel it will work. Shall I install package? I think so. This is exciting, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Are you enjoying this? Oh yeah, it's good. Yes, we picked it despite all, all the problems that um, Linux Mint has recently had, since those problems don't really have to do with the operating system, they have to do with the fact that they need to sort out their WordPress security. Installation has finished. I think we need another reboot. This should just pick the latest kernel. It'll just be the one at the top, I think. Linux Mint 17.3.
does the touchscreen work? Yes, it does. And does the um, mouse pad work? Annoyingly, yes. Well, I'm glad it works in principle, but we will disable it because I hate them. Mm -hmm. Right, now we can get on the network. Yeah. And we're, not, we're not going to show that because that involves passwords, but it's all up and running. Mm. Yes, and I think that deserves a special thank you to the people who make Linux Mint and therefore make, uh, and also the people who make Ubuntu, which Linux Mint's based on, and also the people who make Debian, that Ubuntu's based on, and then the people who make the Linux kernel, uh, which is in Debian, and the GNU project, and the Free Software Foundation, and ultimately Richard Stallman.